Well, hello again, everybody. Good Sunday afternoon. It's time to get Sunday dinner started. Beef stew is what I'm preparing today. And y'all probably thinking, is she going to feed all of them folks with that little bit? To answer your question, no. This is a pound and a half of beef stew already cut. And what I've got for y'all, three more pounds that I got to cut up. How about that? Does that look all right? <clears throat> Okay, I'm just going to film a little bit of this and just show you how you can use a, oh, this on. is a chuck roast that uh, I'm going to be cutting. And it's going to be used as part of my beef stew. I'm going to do an old-fashioned beef stew like Mama used to do. It's, you know, the kind where you saute your vegetables, you put flour on your meat and all that kind of good stuff, fry it up and then cook it up. So I'm using my cooking shears here just to get that little piece off right there. And what I'm going to do is just cut it in nice chunks. And they're going to be just about like those. Ooh, knife ain't sharp, y'all. Mmm. Am I going to have to stop and sharpen my knife? What I'll do is get it in slices. And then I can use my shears here to cut it in chunks. Okay. Cut it, cut it. You know, some people, I'm going to cut it crosswise so to have some of that fat. Because some people like that. Most people like that fat. On there so like i said we're going to go ahead and cut it in the same size chunks that these are already cut in so we're going to have about uh almost five pounds of, of uh, meat in here not quite five because this is like three and something and that that meat there is one and something okay so what we're going to basically do here is cut this in chunks and then we're going to uh season it we're going to put flour on it and we're going to put it in a skillet, in a pot, because I don't want to have uh, so much. I am going to use a big pot. This knife, I'm going to have to stop and sharpen it. Yeah, how do my knives get so dull so quick? So this will give me a chance to get some of that fiber. See that little uh, fibrous meat there? That's what would make it kind of chewy. So I'm going to cut right around that and get it out of there. Okay. Get that little piece off of there. But that's, I think that's the only part where I'm going to have that little issue. But I'll, I'm going to get that out. So y'all hold on. I'll be right back. I'm going to go get this knife sharpened up. And I'm going to come back home because we'll be cutting all day with that dull knife. So hold on. Don't go nowhere. Found my sharp. Now I'm going to get it sharpened up here in a minute. And we're going to get right back to cutting. I don't know how long it's going to take me to get this all sharpened up. But meanwhile, I just want to... Um, Drop in on Sunday afternoon. Hope y'all are having a God-blessed Sunday evening. It's beautiful here. It's kind of chilly. It's a little chill in there, but nonetheless, it's beautiful outside. So, hope y'all are having a God-blessed Sunday. Hope you're praying. Hope you're in contact with someone and encouraging somebody. Because, you know, okay, I was listening to, um, uh, I guess it was a sermon this morning. It just happened to turn my radio to it. And, um... Yeah, that's better. That's yeah, so some of that fiber again. But anyway, they were talking about the story of Ahaz and how he was, as a king, how he was so threatened by the other kings and some I can't remember all those names, but the whole gist of the story I'd heard that priest and heard the story so many times, and I walked away from hearing that this morning from the uh, minister. Forgot, didn't get his name either because I tuned in sort of midway. But anyway, as the story went, Ahaz was kind of sort of discouraged and and uh, almost like I would say scared to face the other his, his adversaries. And so he started writing to this, sending word, you know, come help me. They about to get me and all this kind of stuff. And somewhere along the way, Isaiah got involved in it. And the gist of that story, read that story, please. I'm not going to go all the way through the whole thing because I won't have time to finish it. But anyway, the gist of that story for you Bible scholars, and I don't profess to be one, just love the Lord, and I read in the Word what ministers and blesses me. But anyway, uh, as the story went on, Isaiah came in there and was began to encourage Ahaz that, you know, the Lord said... Uh, certain things are going to happen on your behalf now. Uh, 
you gotta, you gotta, you know, you gotta go ahead on and get get to the point where you can believe these things and and believe what the Lord says. And and uh, so of course, you know, as the story went on, you know, Ahaz wanted a sign. So Isaiah instructed him, well, why don't you go ahead and uh, ask the Lord for a sign? He'll give you a sign. And so Ahaz, you know, being who he was, said, woo, I'm not going to question the Lord. So there's another lesson there. And not so much as what they were saying per se, but the lessons within the scriptures and within that text and what he was talking about all boiled down to when you got things going on in your life. And, you know, the word of God tells you to encourage yourself. But when you got things going on in your life to the point where you can't see your way to encourage yourself, you can't find a word, you can't hear a word. Because, you know, part of that is because we stop believing and trusting God. So the whole uh, gist of that was to show you how awesome God is. Somewhere along the way, Isaiah said to him, well, God is going to send you a sign whether you want him to or not. How about that? How about that for an awesome God? I mean, we got to think about how awesome God is because he's sovereign. If he says he's going to do something, quit doubting. So that's that's my takeaway. Stop doubting. When the Lord, when the word comes from the Lord, you don't need to doubt it. You need to trust him and move forward and do what you need to do so that those manifested blessings can come on through. So as it turned out, uh, you know, as, as far as me, what I'm... I got to thinking, I said, how many times have God told us, you know, your children going to be all right, this going to happen, your children going to be all right, but you out here doing all, you ran and did all this other stuff, but what you need to be doing, <clears throat> and God, well, let me tell you, the blessings that God has for you is for you, we just have to be patient and wait, and sometimes we get so doubtful. It's, we, we, you know, the Lord is sending us signs and he's sending us signals. And, you know, the word from God doesn't always necessarily come, you know, where we say, oh, it came right from his mouth. And this and that. And that. sometimes those words come through other people. And you have to trust, you know, God, the counsel. You have to trust those other people to be able to come. Or you got to be able to ask. And, you know, all of us sometimes need a word from somebody else, you know, uh, we'll say I'm waiting on to hear from the Lord, but when that doubtfulness coming there, we miss out on the fact that there was somebody else that the Lord sent. He sent this person to give you that word and he will bear his word out. He will bear his word out. So we got to be more trusting of the, when we say, you know, we get a word from the Lord and if it don't drop on us instantly, then we begin to, become weary we, we, we become doubtful so you know and then we get so doubtful and weary we can't even encourage ourselves so we don't want to defeat our own purpose by not believing and being lax in hearing from the lord so i just want to come back and say that to y'all while i'm doing this so i almost got this meat cut up this knife still is not as sharp as it needs to be but you know just wait on the lord and listen and know that uh Sometimes, you know, we can't always lean to our own understanding about stuff. Sometimes we have to hear it from somebody else. And and if we listen to the Lord and we trust in him, we don't know how God works his stuff out. We just know that he works it out. And truly, 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 if God sends you a word and it's from him, whatever he says is going to come to reality. Maybe not what we think it's supposed to. But it will come to reality. He's going to bless you. If he got that blessing cut out for you, just like Isaiah told him, look, the Lord will send you a sign because he knows that's what it takes for you. Because, you know, you are so, uh, so wonderfully made and so specifically made by him. He knows who you are and how you are and what you can stand and what you can't stand. God knows that already. So we don't have to worry about that part of it. So. We're just going to have to learn how to trust in the Lord more and just show that faith in his word and move forward. I thought that was just so awesome to me because I think, you know, we think we all there in a bag of chips sometimes. Uh, honey, we all need somebody sometimes. 
Okay, I got my meat all cut up. How about that for about almost five pounds of stew? So what I'm going to do next is go ahead and get the uh, seasoning on it. I've got the, let me take this glove off. That's the meat hand glove. <clears throat> We're just going to use this non meat hand glove. This is some onion powder. I'm going to season it up really good with the onion powder. About a good couple of tablespoons full because this is, like I said, this is about five pounds of meat. This is garlic powder. And then when they get it all on here, I'm just going to mix it all together. Okay, so, so this is going to be uh, old-fashioned um, beef stew the way my mom used to make it and grandma used to make it. This is still a tribute to my African-American heritage. These uh, Beef stew is one of the staple foods because back in the day, huh, beef stew was one of those cheap meals to eat. And nowadays, just regular beef stew, every, you know what, chicken costs a lot of money these days. I mean, the, the thing, the meats that were just so uh, readily available and reasonably priced for us, honey, some of that stuff is out of sight now. So, anywho, and lastly, I'm going to go ahead, this is our... Uh, this is a Marsala seasoning, and this is just something I'm adding to it because this is still commemorative of how my mom used to cook. She would use whatever she had in the kitchen cabinet to get stuff done, to get it seasoned up real good. So this is going to be really very seasoned, honey. I've already put my everything in the, put the, everything in the cabinet on it. Yes, baby doll. When I get done, we'll go outside, okay? It's kind of cool okay. out there, too. Okay. Huh? Corinne's outside? Oh, okay. Well, you might need to go ahead and put your shoes on. Get your shoes and put them on there. Okay, he wants to go outside, Lord. He ain't going to stay long because you know why? It's beautiful out there, but it's cold. To me, it's cold. I went out there earlier. So, okay, I got my meat ready now to go ahead and dredge in this flour. Got my grease hot over there on the stove. We're going to get this, because um, we got to get this meat on the stove, y'all. And then I'll go ahead and get my veggies ready. So, this is how you do it. Get that meat ready, all seasoned up. You see my veggies sitting around. I got to cut some, and the others I've already cut. So, we're going to get this show on the road. Okay. Alrighty then. Okay. I think I got all the season on there that I need. Let's see. Oh no, I missed one thing. I'm gonna put a little bit of uh, a little bit of soy sauce on there. This is look just a little extra. Just a little extra, y'all. Okay. Okay. So everything is ready. I'm gonna get over here on the other side. And we're going to get this pan, because we got to get this meat cooking. Cooking, cooking. I got about three hours left to get this meal done. This meat's going to have to cook about two and a half hours. Uh, let's face it, y'all. That's a big, that's a lot of meat. So this is why I'm having to use my big old deep pot. I can't do it in the skillet, in my um, castle. You can open it, baby. Yeah. Go ahead. Now, make sure if Corinne's out there, you can say if not, I'm going to get ready to look. You may have to come back in. I don't trust my babies out, honey, big or small. Well, I can't see them. Okay, you're going to let me know. Okay, thank you, sugar. Your big, the teenagers were here last time. They want to go for a walk. And they, I told them, don't walk any further. He thought you were going to sit outside. He was going to walk. Oh, he thought you were going to sit out there for a while. Yeah, or either if you're going to play, you can play right there in the front for a minute. I'll come watch you just for about 30 minutes, okay? Gigi got to cook. Now, Kareem's coming in while he's coming out. Oh, well, that's the way life works sometimes. So, I uh, got the meat all ready to go. So, if y'all hang on a minute, I'll be right back. Okay, just briefly, we're going to go ahead and put this meat into uh, the flour. Wow, this is a lot of meat, y'all. Gotta get it in here, coat it real good because this is gonna help us to make that good old gravy that uh, forms in the pot once you get those liquids going on in there. Okay, 
So, got those. We're going to brown them. Okay, let's get over here on the stove. Got that all good and hot, I hope. Oh, yeah, it needs to be real, real hot. Just as hot as you can get it without it burning, y'all. I've got olive oil in my pan. Let me tell you, this is my gum, big old gumbo pot, y'all. But I, honey, I use it for everything. Soup, gumbo, because it's the biggest pot I've got. And I've got some of those big um, metal pots. Got a few of those. But um, <clears throat> I don't use them because they are huge. Real huge. They're much bigger than that. Sometimes too big. So what I'm going to do... I'm putting a little jerk seasoning on this meat as well. I forgot to put it on there. I, I, I'm, I'm putting it on top of what I've already flowered. So anyway, get this grease real good and hot. And uh, we're going to start frying this beef up, y'all. Okay, y'all believe that grease is hot enough. I see it. Y'all hang on one sec. Let me get my meat in the pot and I'll give you some lemonade, okay? I'm going to be right with you, my darling. Okay, I'm just going to start dropping these pieces of meat in there. And we're going to fry them until they get brown. Okay. Oh, I'll get quite a bit in there. And like I said, the flour on there is what's going to help make the uh, gravy at the end of this dish. Okay. Okay, so we got that first pan in. It is frying. And we're going to get the rest of it going. So hang in there now. Okay, I got my first pan out. So you want it nice and brown, sort of like that. I got my second pan in. Because I had so many uh, pieces I had to do it in two installations. But we're just going to keep right on going. And we'll be back for the next step. Okay, y'all, here we go again. Got the meat all browned up. So now the next thing, we got to get some liquid you in there. Here. See, look. It's, it's not, you can't see your look. It's all in Okay, all right. Don't you just leave it like that, okay? Honey, listen, this volume is really something else. Okay, so this. I use, instead of broth, I use me some, you can use uh, golden onion, lifted onion soup mix, either one to make you uh, some broth to go in there. So I'm using, this is like two and a half cups of liquid, and I got to pour another two. Is this, you need enough liquid to cover, see how pretty and brown that is? You need another, you need enough rather in there to cover your meat. Okay. So I think one more round. I think that just about covers. So we're going to say, yeah, I think that's enough. I think it's covered and of course you need to add a little bit more liquid you know to thin it out later on in the cooking process you can always do that but this is going to thicken up as it cooks uh because remember we got the flour on there so we're just going to go ahead and put a little bit more water so that's a lot of meat y'all okay and when you get you know with me now I'm doing this this for memory. When I get this cooked to a point, I'm going to taste that broth. If I need to add any other ingredients, y'all know me, I'm going to add them because this is going to be right when it hits the table. So for right now, it's just the ingredients that we talked about. Uh, when you mix your uh, five cups of, I'm sorry, that's six cups because I believe this is a, yeah, three cups. When you mix your six cups of broth in there, you can have some already mixed um beef broth you can use the dry broth you can even use chicken broth if you mess around and don't have any beef broth on hand and then just mix it up real good pour it in there and then when the meat cooks for a while just taste it and see if you you know what you want your food to taste like but this is basic old-fashioned beef stew this is how you do beef stew it takes a little while but honey there's love in every minute that it takes to prepare this dish okay so we're going to let it come to a good old boil. Turn that heat down. We're going to let it simmer. And I think I may finish it off in the oven because I might put it in my big old yellow uh, baking dish. We're going to clean up the inside of this pot because it's driving me crazy. Um, <clears throat> I'm sure the veggies will bring it up anyway. But anyway, we got about that many more, or about half that much more vegetables to put in there. So see, it's, 
It's going to thicken. Oh, Lord, yeah, it'll thicken up a lot. So I know I'm going to have to add some more liquid to it <clears throat> to thin it out a little bit before it gets done. So we're going to cook this for an hour and a half. Then we're going to add those veggies. I'm going to go ahead and get them ready for sauteing. Okay, so I'm going to put the lid on that. Well, we're going to let it boil up first, and then I'll put the lid on, throw the veggies in, and we're going to have this this show going to be on the road, y'all. So hang tight, and we'll get the veggies ready. Okay, y'all, I'm back. I got my potatoes peeled except for this one, and I've got my carrots. I've washed them. So now you can just take a, a, um, a peeler and do this. You know how y'all know how to do this. Oh, yeah, hold on just a minute. I forgot you already did me. Just take and, you know, this peel, this is not the greatest peel, but it will just take a peeler. I got another. Use your peeler because it's better to do the carrots with. And we're just going to chop them in pieces. About this, that one's too big. I've got a steel. So I'm, what I'm doing, the reason I came back to show y'all, yes, baby. Uh, can you give me kitchen for one day? Okay, hold one sec. I forgot him the last time. Isn't that a shame? Okay. I'm girl, Gigi coming. I'm trying to get this food on. Okay, I peeled my potatoes and I've cut them in pieces like that. I got probably got five different shapes, but that's okay. Watch out, honey. You hurt your hand doing that. Don't do that. Okay. You saw a boy. He saw a boy. Okay. So just cut them like this. Skin these. Here's one way. This is what we used to have to do our potatoes. Uh, carrots when we grew up just take a sharp knife and just run down like that it does the same thing and that's what i'm gonna do with these because that thing don't want to do right you know there's more than one way to skin a carrot okay and just do it like that and then we're gonna cut them in pieces like so not real thin but we're gonna cut them kind of chunky pieces like beef stew okay and the same thing with our celery we're gonna cut it like so pieces like about like this and I think for that amount of uh, stew I believe <clears throat> two three good sized stalks of celery because you know I told you celery is really really strong and uh, you just don't have to use a whole lot of celery because it's strong we don't want that celery you know I told you celery will take over y'all notice I'm using my nice uh, cutting board when I think, when I remember, I got it down here. But just take and make a uh, pretty good size chunks like so. Okay. And there we are for the celery. I'm going to go ahead and, oh, I've got some red pepper. And I got these peppers because they're pretty, and they add a little, uh, a little bit different flavor than uh, green peppers do. So all I want to do with those, cut them down the middle like so. And I'm going to do them in strips so they'll sort of show up in the stew. How about that? This, this, is, this is for taste, but it also makes the uh, stew look pretty. So we're going to put all these veggies are going in. I'm going to have a slew of veggies when I get done. So just take it and cut them in strips. And I've got another one uh, just a little bit smaller than that that's going to go in there. But these taste so good. They taste because they got a little sweet taste to them. So they taste just as good raw as they do cooked. To me, they do anyway. And for my green pepper, where are they? Uh, someone gave me a whole bunch of green peppers. And so what I, oh, here they are right here. I had so many, I went ahead and chopped them some and froze them. They chop and squeeze, uh, freeze real good. And I did the same thing with my onions. So you won't see me chopping onions. I froze, chopped and froze two bags of onions, honey. That was a lifesaver. Especially onion, because I use peppers and onions pretty much in most things that I cook. So, you know, um, sometimes, you know, stuff like that just comes in handy. Get the seeds out. Okay, the, all these veggies, I'm going to have to wash them, rinse them off again. They've been washed, because when I get them from the store, what I do is go ahead and uh, wash them off and put them in the refrigerator. Use them again, I'll just rinse them off again. So, I just got to finish up peeling that last potato that I had left off over on the side over there. And make sure you dry your, once you wash your veggies, dry them off so that water won't kiss. Remember, we got to saute these veggies before we put them into the stew. So, hang on, we'll be right back. 
Okay, y'all, the veggies are cut, and I got them all mixed up together. So whenever you get ready to, uh, this is my gravy spoon. That gravy is so good, y'all. Um, whenever you uh, get ready to saute these veggies, make sure as much of the water is off of them as possible. I did all that, dried them, and went right to the sink and sprayed them again. So I had to re-dry them. So anyway, I'm going to get ready now to go ahead and put them in this hot, hot grease. Be careful. You need the grease hot, but you need to be careful about putting it in. So let's get over here to the frying pan, and we're going to get these veggies sauteed up. In about 30 minutes, they're going to go into the pot with the meat. And we're on the last step of this big stew beef. This is a big old pan of veggies. Okay. I think that's enough in that pan for right now. <clears throat> so have that heat up as high as you can get it now. Okay. I got about a half a cup of uh, oil in that pan and just let them sit there and saute. And when they finish saute, we're just going to go ahead and put them into our stew beef. And the stew beef will be ready. Uh, it's been cooking already for, let's see, about a little bit over an hour. So it has about another hour and a half to go. Okay, we'll be right back, y'all. Okay, y'all, uh, those veggies are cooking real good. I'm going to go ahead and get my cabbage chopped. I'm going to go ahead and put my cabbage and my rice on in about 30 minutes. Everything will pretty much be on the stove and cooking. So we'll be right back. Okay, everybody. The sautéed veggies are ready to go into the beef stew. The beef stew has been cooking for an hour and... I put a quarter. Almost an hour and a half. So now we're going to put this stew. This beef uh, is kind of real, real tender. Nice and tender, praise the Lord. Uh, that chuck steak, the chuck roast, rather, was really good. So, what we're gonna do is just go ahead and get the veggies in. We're just gonna spoon them in. That's gonna be some good eating, y'all. Look how nice and thick. I'm telling you, this is a good dish. This is the way mama used to cook. You know, I was just telling Tens, I was talking to her. It's been so long since I cooked it like this. She probably was a child the last time I cooked it like this. Because for one thing, it takes a little bit more time. It gets a little bit more involved. Uh, a little bit more hands-on, if you will. But you cannot beat the taste. The difference in taste in cooking stew beef, where you saute everything out like this. And just putting everything there together, big difference, y'all, big difference. So, we're getting it the old-fashioned way. Since we're paying tribute to my heritage, and this just goes back to my childhood, this is the way my mom uh, prepared beef stew, the old-fashioned way. So, I appreciate the old ways of doing things, ooh, as much as I do the new way. So, you see how you get that all stirred up in there? Doesn't that just look good? Now, those vegetables were so good and well seasoned and sauteed up so wonderfully. We could have eaten those vegetables just like they were with whatever. I don't know, whatever. You know, we can turn it down, sugar. Okay? He forgets, honey. And just remember, while you're cooking this stew, Continue to stir it because see it'll, it's stuck that much on the bottom, but it's not burned, but it'll stick. But you have to keep on because remember you got the thickener in that uh, flour is thickening it. So this beef stew is ready for the world, y'all. Be careful over there. You okay? What are you doing? Oh, you're drinking. Okay. So this is how I got to cook about another good hour. Okay. So we'll be back in about 45 minutes. Okay, we get ready to get the cabbage started. So what I'm going to do is steam these in um, three quarters of a stick of butter, a cup of water, and all of my seasonings. You can see complete seasoning there and about four strips of bacon. So first, I had some green, some of the green cabbage parts. I cut them in strips. It takes maybe 10 minutes, maybe longer for them to cook so what I'm gonna do is go ahead and get them in there and get them going 
and then I'll drop my other cabbage in there. So for right now, we're just going to let them play around in there and cook for a few minutes. I'm sure I'm going to have to add a little bit more water because we don't want, I don't like water pot cabbage. So we're going to just let them sit around in there and do what they do on the medium high heat. In fact, I'm going to go ahead and cover these and let them do that. And then I'll go ahead and get started on uh, <coughs> making my cornbread. It's almost uh, 4.30. All right. Let me get on the other side and I'll be back. Y'all, I made the cornbread without filming it. But anyway, it's two and a half cups of cornmeal, one egg, a half a cup of sugar, a cup and a half of milk, preferably like the evaporated milk. And just mix it up really, really good. Put some oil in it, a three-fourths of a cup of oil or lard, whatever you use. Mix it up real good. Put it in this pan. I'm going to bake it for about 20 minutes and we'll have cornbread, y'all. Be right back. Okay, y'all. I had that cabbage in there steaming, but it all cooked down. I almost had a mishap. See, it looks brown. It browned on me, but honey, that's going to bring up some extra flavor. We still going to steam them. That's why you have to pay attention, close attention, all the time. My stove, for some odd reason, it was cooking more on one side than on the other. But it's it's retrievable because, see, it did not burn. It's simply brown. That's just another level of flavor, y'all. Just another level. It, it'll give the flavor now of a stir-fried cabbage, but we ain't fussing. So what I'm going to do, have another little piece of bacon left. I'm going to go ahead and drop these cabbage in. And they're just going to continue to steam. And I'm going to go ahead and put seasoning in between every installation of the cabbage. And what I'm uh, seasoning with, onion powder, garlic powder. I'm going to put a, a tablespoon of sugar, brown sugar. tablespoon of, uh, about a couple of tablespoons of Bragg's vinegar. Stir them up. And we're going to see what they taste like. We'll be right back. Okay, those cabbage are just about ready for me to just let them roll and steam. They're coming. I got them all um, in the pan. And, of course, you see we got the broth in there. So, we are doing steamed cabbage today, not stir-fried cabbage. Okay? So, we got all the usual seasons in there. My complete season, my everything. But the kitchen cabinet season, some... Um, this is a three pound cabbage. I remember that because I ordered that's what I ordered from the store three pound cabbage. I'm stirring in my rice now. I got it on the back burner back there. I mixed two cups of yellow rice and two and a cup and a half of white jasmine rice. So that's going to cook and make a nice blend. I didn't want all of one thing since I got the beef stew. So everything is rolling in the next 30 minutes. I believe we're going to be eating. I do believe it. Now the flavor tray has not quite rolled in. Just got one person coming in uh, in their own car here waiting. So they'll be eating this for run. He'll be in here eating in about 30 minutes. But this dinner is just about done, y'all. Um, just wanted to, like I say, pay homage to our culture, to our African-American culture by cooking a meal that we traditionally cooked when I was growing up in this, these steamed cabbage. You know, I put a little bit of twist on what Mama showed me how to do. She always encouraged me to fix it however I thought it was going to taste good. And whenever I was like, gosh, I probably was in grandma, not, I mean, what do you call it, junior high. And she would let me loose in that kitchen and just let me go for it. So I thank God that she did that. She trusted me to do that because I'm sure she knew what she had taught me. I was just one of those kids that liked to be around the kitchen, liked to cook, so... We got these cabbage going. We got the rice going. The beef stew is right there in that pot. Cornbread's in the oven. So I'll see y'all in about 10, 15 minutes. Okay, y'all still celebrating African-American heritage. Still celebrating my heritage. Still celebrating, y'all. So we're going to do this all year long. This is a part of my history, what I'm cooking for Sunday dinner. So let's get back up here to the kitchen. And finish up this dinner. Just want to let y'all be reminded a little bit 
about our characters. So let's get up here to the kitchen and get it finished off, y'all. Okay, so everything is done now. Everything's out of the oven. That's some leftovers. How about that? Leftover barbecue chicken from day before yesterday. That is my uh, steamed cabbage, yellow rice, cornbread, got that butter melting on top, and mama's beef stew. Y'all, look, we in for a treat. That is some of the best beef stew. And you know what I was telling y'all, the difference is, with all this long cooking, the taste, is the differences in the taste, the gravy, look at that savory, look at that gravy. All that meat roll around in there. All five pounds of it. So we get ready to sit back, relax, and enjoy. Just as soon as the flavor train pulls in, we're going to sit back, relax, and enjoy this meal. Tanya's going to bring something for dessert. I'm not sure what. But thank you guys for tuning in, for listening, for supporting, for praying. Keep those prayers going up, guys, so the blessings will continue to come down. Do something kind for someone. Telephone call a text, or maybe even a visit with your mask on, of course. So thank y'all again. Love y'all. Until I decide to cook again, keep those prayers going up now so those blessings will continue to come down. Thank you. Love you. Toodaloo.